Ah, making a video, I think. Yeah, we are. So anyway, I'm really, oh, this is, this is terrible here. Horrible, I'm raining on top of it, and uh, yeah, I'm just so wrong. I am so not correct. Anyway, um, I was thinking, as I often do. Uh, so anyway, I have done another physics video on this uh, two-slit thing, and of course it's getting resoundingly hated. Um, but, yeah, I don't think it can, this one, I mean, it's just so, this was so bad, and it's just, you know, you can just see that this is just a, this is a cult of physics. This is a, these people aren't rational. <laughs> you know, they have no respect for the truth or science, clearly. Um, they are misrepresenting the evidence. Now, you don't misrepresent the evidence unless you have a, an agenda. So, clearly, they're the ones with the agenda. Um, anyway. And that gets into these other arguments, too, where people keep changing the subject and, you know, they'll never answer direct questions. They'll never accept reasonable premises as being consistent. Uh, they'll just change the premises to, uh, you know, when it's convenient to their argument. And this is Santa Contavad all over the place, and you can see him do it in the text exchanges where he just changes the meaning of words in the middle of conversations. You know, in one part of the conversation, something meant something, and in another part, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, just turns it on and off, wherever he likes. Um, so he can always evade the real question, uh, the real points that are being made. And so, maybe I'll just emphasize some of these points. Um, clearly, procreating is an act of aggression. Now, is that reasonable? You can't argue against that, right? It's it's not leaving things alone. It's not keeping your defensive position and saying, I will not risk. It's clearly got risk associated with it. No one could deny that. Can they reasonably? It's clearly, okay, clearly not a sure thing, not um, a guarantee, not... Um, unknown, uh, you know, what you're getting yourself into, what you're getting your creation into. So it's clearly an act of aggression. We can, it would be almost, well, I'm going to say it's going to be unreasonable, because I think it is unreasonable. I think we can say it's unreasonable for somebody to think that if a life isn't created, that it suffers in some purgatory, that if it isn't brought onto this planet to feel things that somehow it's somewhere else feeling horrible or in some lesser state, tortured in some way, harmed in some manner. I think that that can be called ludicrous, right? I mean, we could say that the, the non-existent Martians aren't sitting in some cage somewhere saying, why didn't somebody make us exist? Um, so clearly the default is very safe. You can't make harm if you don't make nothing. <laughs> you know, just can't. can't. Harm can't happen if you don't make the machine that manifests it. Is there something here, like I said, is there something in that premise that can be rationally argued? That a procreator is acting aggressively and uh, taking a risk, and uh, if they're going to do it, that you would expect that they would say, I'm confident it's okay. I'm confident it's not a, a substantial risk, or it's not a, you know, if the worst happens, it's okay. So what? It just is, or something. <laughs> well, whatever. Uh, see, that's it. It just, it just is it a way. So it doesn't matter how many if you said, if you had a, a, a system where you had, a, had dice and they had skull and crossbones on them, so let's say you had 50 sides to the dice and there was only one set of skull and crossbones, you know, maybe you'd say, well, look, it's worth it because it works so many times and very rarely do you get the two skulls. But what if I double the number of skulls or triple them or quadruple them? Now what? What if it's 50-50, you know? And we know the real statistics on planet Earth. 
like I said, you're you're pretty doomed. I mean, if you don't get this, you're going to get that, right? If you're not ugly, you're going to be stupid. If you you know if you if you don't get cancer, you're going to get the uh, stroke. If you don't get this, you're going to get that. Um, generally speaking, I mean, I'm just saying that it's really hard to go unscathed, and on balance, the average life isn't very spectacular. I, I wouldn't want to live one of them. I mean, maybe Antikontrovod would, um, but I, I wouldn't. Uh, but, you know, I wouldn't want to live the exceptional life either. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather just be left alone. Uh, but anyway, so I, I don't want to get off that one key point. So the first thing to establish is let's recognize this is an act of aggression. You are opening the door, not only to this good thing, but to this bad thing. And that to do that, you're assigning it to someone else. You're not going to live their life. Their life is a new life. You're making it happen. You know, it has to be conceded that you have to look at it as the gift kind of argument, you know, where you're allowed to give people gifts. You're not allowed to give them anthrax or smallpox. Um, you know, you're not allowed to call uh, torture a gift. <laughs> you know, you really just aren't. So, if there's a risk of it, you have to explain why you are allowed to assign that risk. Then you'll have to explain why not only you're allowed to do it, you have the competence to do it, you're qualified to do it, but you also ex have to explain the qualifications. You know, besides just saying, I have a degree in life creation, you also have to point out uh, how that degree has informed you, how your greater competence uh, has made you capable. Uh, so you have to kind of give the reasoning. You have to explain why this is a good idea. <laughs> and, um, you know, the Anacontavods will just say, because there was something in it for me. <laughs> That'll be his scientific description of the reasoning, the sensibility of it would be because he wanted something and he doesn't mind compromising something else's welfare to get it. That's the obvious fact, because he's not giving us any reasoning. He's not giving us some sort of logic where we can say, okay, I can, I can see your calculation that uh, you're creating so many firemen that if you create one fire, it's okay, because the firemen have put out so many other fires. But you can't really make that argument for life. <laughs> you just can't. Um, because the fundamental problem is gone once you stop making firemen. Because firemen are making the fires. <laughs> so it just doesn't work. These two entities, the mess maker and the mess cleaner upper, are the same. They come out of the same egg. They hatch from the same egg. Uh, so you just can't, you can't use that as an argument because it's self-defeating. Uh, it was clearly the, if the firemen are making all the fires, it's better just to stop making firemen. You solve both problems. No more fires, <laughs> yeah, and no more firemen eating donuts. Uh, so anyway, um, let's see how else to metaphor this. Uh, you know, but people really just don't, and, you know, I think, well, it's, yeah, I think I'll waste some time on this determinism thing because people keep bragging on this like they can't understand it. Uh, determinism doesn't mean we don't have complex process. Uh, we're more complicated than cavemen 50,000 years ago. Um, yes, it's all preordained how all these marbles are going to bang into each other. But clearly they bang into each other as music when it comes to intelligence. Intelligence has a pattern to it. Intelligence follows these logical rules 
um, of deduction and combination of uh, rational categorization. This is part of what intelligence does. So we land on the moon because we rationally categorized. We didn't randomly categorize, we rationally categorized and developed an understanding of physics that enabled us to land on the moon. So although landing on the moon was inevitable, it had to go through this process of acquiring the faculty to do it. Now the argument in determinism is being made is that we are all built this way. I didn't just fall on my understanding. It's built out of pieces, evidence, process, a trial, so to speak. And if I speak a video, the point is I intend through that process to be part of an inevitable change in a mind perspective. That will be the, that's the intended consequence. I do not make videos just to talk. I wish them to have impact, to create a uh, cause and effect chain of thinking that will, you know, improve somebody's thinking <laughs> and uh, ultimately to the correct answers that I think the word improvement implies. Get it right and you'll get the facts right and then you'll get the, the answers right. Um, so, although it's all deterministic, although it's all mechanical, all of it is necessary. You had to do rocket experiments to figure out how rockets, what rockets would get you to the moon. You have to have arguments and conversation to shake the dirt off of facts and figures. You have to test them through these processes to show them for their integrity and their strength. Uh, it's part of uh, a necessary deterministic, if you want to have the deterministic output, if the, if the deterministic output or, or end result that I hope to achieve is going to be achieved, let's say it's landing on the moon, I can logically know what has to be done before that can happen. And before that can happen, you have to do these rocket experiments, and you have to do these fuel experiments, and you do all these experiments. And we know before uh, the, the, the phraseology that will work on all minds, and the, the pr pr most best perfect argument has to be refined through a, a, a trial and error of these kinds of conversations. Uh, so it's all part of the, how the, the vibration moves through the substance and changes its character, much like quantum mechanics. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, that's a, I gotta do some more videos, I am mean, getting some clarity on that whole two slit thing, I'll have to do another video. Um, but anyway, uh, so when I say it's determinism. That's, they keep confusing the word determinism with futility. And how, how is it, like I said, if you're determined in 1954 to land on the moon, you know you can't be futile. <laughs> you know you can't just sit back and wait and watch it happen. No, you have to make it happen. It's going to require a process for it to happen. And even though you're going to be motivated and you're going to construct that process completely out of a deterministic uh, movement, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're the effect and now you're going to create causes. And just because you're conceding that it's all cause and effect doesn't mean that it can't, doesn't have to happen. It does have to happen. And certainly you would get urgent about the necessity of certain things to take place if uh, you know that it has to happen in a certain amount of time and you'd know certain, certain uh, checkpoints would have to be uh, reached for you to be able to get something done in a certain amount of time. So you could panic because you could see how deterministically hope was disappearing because now there was not enough time 
uh, for you, your runner to catch up in the race. You can calculate these things. You can understand them. And uh, you can react to them. So again, it's, uh, you know, say we're just, somebody used the phrase something like a meat bags on a string or something. Yeah, it's a little more complicated than that. It's meat bags on very complex strings. I mean, we're being pulled by incredibly nuanced strings. Um, a lot of them going in all kinds of ways and directions and tangles. You know, half of them emotional strings, half of them knowledge strings. Uh, a lot of freaking strings. So, yes, it's all strings. We're just puppets. But just puppet? I mean, it's not like there's a string on, you know, elbow, arm, hand, leg, knee. You know, it's not like ten strings. A lot of fucking strings. <laughs> it deserves a little more respect than, uh, you know, meat bag on a string. But the anaconda vods are the opposite because they still think they're doing something unstring like. That somebody didn't pull a string that made them uh, move, that made their brain move. And uh, that's a delusion. Uh, you are a product, you're, not, you're a byproduct. <laughs> it's just that's the way it is. It's not a, an insult, it's just a truth. And being byproduct in a very complex circumstance isn't a bad thing. Anyway. Oh, I think my Christmas lights are on. Maybe we'll go view them. Oh, they seem to be working. Yeah, it's not too bad. <laughs> yeah, my Christmas lights. Uh, I was the sucker who had to put them up. next time. Ah, back. Uh, you know, so I thought I'd mess with this word confidence a little bit more and the, the obligation to be confident. You know, and that's another, I think, I just a, 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 a logically untenable position of the people like Anna Kantavad who claim mystery, claim uncertainty, lack of knowledge, and yet uh, continue to act or defend actions that we know now through statistical facts <laughs> to be uh, dangerous. That they have this component in them. And if you're not completely certain that that danger is not uh, significant, uh, then what, uh, again, how, why would why would being anything else than siding on, you know, faulting on the side of caution not be the rational move? Uh, I mean, in every other regard, uh, that would be the advice of intelligent people is, you know, in uncertainty, you know, side on caution. Uh, you know, step carefully, step assertively, uh, and, uh, you know, make sure of your steps, so to speak. You know, do whatever you can to make sure the ground that you're stepping on is ground, like doing this kind of stuff. Uh, slow and sure, and, uh, but yet in something this fundamental, this Something I'm explain. I, uh, many people are attempting to explain to him is fundamentally hugely important. This is about torture. It's not about incidental trespasses. It's not about uh, you know you accidentally scratched your neighbor's car with your dog leash or something. No, this is <laughs> this is a significant harm. Uh, and uh, where's the logic? You're, un you're claiming an uncertainty. You're claiming a, that you don't know. And yet you're asserting that you have a right to be reckless in the face of your lack of knowledge. That you don't even have to do the caution thing. 
You don't even have to step uh, assuredly. Um, it's just flatly wrong. Like I said, this would be fine if you were playing with your own welfare. If you're starting fires in your own yard. Well, even that's not a good analogy, right? Because they spread. But let's just say that they were just a fire that only threatened to burn down your own house. Well, yeah, there's not much argument. You can argue that you're going to stop people from being insane, but to some extent, there's not much you can do. Uh, it's like, uh, you know, I remember there was that guy that, you know, when the volcano, you know, the Washington State volcano was going to erupt, you know, he wouldn't leave. And uh, I think it was a, I think it was a crackpot. But regardless, he certainly had the choice to get blown up by the volcano because he wasn't tying his kids, <laughs> you know, to any sticks. He wasn't imposing death on anybody else or uh, harm. Fiery death. Certainly a fiery one. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I mean... <laughs> It's just logical if you're going to claim ignorance, and he's claiming an ignorance. He's claiming he don't know. That's why he can't answer any questions. So he doesn't know anything. And yet he's claiming in ignorance he's allowed to act, uh, jeopardizing the welfare of other people. How do you make sense out of that? It's like somebody saying they're they have a claiming a right to drive a bus. Uh, you know, when they don't have a license, they are admitting they don't know how to drive. Uh, doesn't make any sense. Um, so, yeah, we're not going to get either, we're not going to get any of these necessary explanations. He'll call it guilt. It's not about guilt. It's not about assigning responsibility or blame. It's about preventing future harm. It's about describing an activity. Uh, I don't really care. I mean, once you've burned down the neighbor's house, I'm not even that particularly interested in, you know, smacking you in the head for it. What I'm particularly interested in is preventing you from doing it again and again and again. Preventing you in the generic sense, the your kind, uh, from continuing to perpetrate the act. Um, and he would argue that if somehow if I give you the knowledge of the danger I've falsely stolen from you your right to ignorance. <laughs> you know, which is also... Can anybody make any sense out of that? No. Again, if, if you were... If it was just you, you could claim a right to ignorance. But if your behavior is going to affect someone else, you just can't claim a right to ignorance. You can't claim a right to recklessness. So, it just doesn't work as a impositional, uh, as, a just, as, a, as a way of viewing acts of imposition, uh, gift giving. You just can't call this gift giving. It's rape. <laughs> you know, uh, the rapists aren't allowed to call their activity gift giving. They're just not. And that's all he's trying to do. He's trying to use semantics and mushy language to turn his overt trespass, his aggressive action, his ignorance into some gift he's giving us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway. It's probably enough. But I mean, this whole... The consent argument, again, it just isn't that complicated. The fact that you can't get consent does not eliminate the obligation. And the obligation... The only... The only wild card replacement for consent is certainty. It just is. 
It's, it, it's, you don't need consent if you have certainty of good result. If it's certain that what you're doing is good, you have a right to do it uh, without consent. But clearly that's not the game of procreation. He doesn't have a right to impose it, and he doesn't have a right to uh, diminish it. You have no right to devalue the suffering of the victims. You just have no fucking right uh, to tell them uh, they're a justifiable sacrifice to your ambition. You can say it, but without proof, you've said nothing. You've just rationalized a trespass. You've just rationalized owning a slave or raping a woman. You've just rationalized a violation uh, with a lie, with a complete mischaracterization of uh, the truth. Uh, yeah, you don't feel my pain, and you have no right to tell me what it's worth, fucker. Anyway, I think that would do it. Yeah, it seems quite adequate. I mean, it seems like a video, it wasn't, it wasn't really good video, but it's a video. Let's see if I get rid of these trees. They're just really, just, look at all this mess. Yeah. We should clean it up. Oh, that's right. I have to do that. I don't know, I should have found some time to do a little better. I mean, I did clean up in here a little. Maybe it's much nicer in here. I mean, I have a little pond. I see some new sticks have fallen. I haven't cleaned up. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, maybe I haven't been doing my duty. Cleaning up some of that. So, anyway. Yeah, this pack of sander really is kind of nice the way it evergreens. It does give you a feeling for the, <laughs> you know, there is hope. Ah, the weather will change. Anyway, until the next encounter.